Well, I hope everybody's doing fine today. I hope everything been good for you. I know you've been under God's care, and I know you've been under Jesus Christ's leading. Therefore, if I know that you are blessed, sometimes things may not go the way that we want them to go. We are faced with many different types of changes in our life that affect us in many different ways. And sometimes we just don't know how to handle them changes, and them changes makes us mad and frustrated and miserable and we feel like giving up on life. We lose hope, you understand? We get angry, we get mad, you understand? But I came to tell you today that you can deal with life changes. Them unwanted life changes in your life, you can deal with them through the power of Jesus Christ, through the Word of God. If you let the Word of God work in your life, whatever change you face in life, the unwanted changes that take place in your life that you don't want, guess what? You'll be able to deal with them and you'll be able to get them right through Jesus. Through Jesus, through the Word of God, through God, through faith in Jesus Christ, the Father, the Son, and the Holy Spirit, and the Word of God. I know that you can get through anything in life. But you know what? I want you to know that we're going to always have to deal with unwanted life changes. See, you got to understand, unwanted life changes can take place in your finance. Yes. Sometimes changes take place in our finance that seem like a negative. It makes us mad and make us frustrated. But you got to deal with it. Sometimes unwanted change can come in your employment. Unwanted change can come in your family, your school, etc. Unwanted change can come in the church. It doesn't make a difference, but it affects you. See, that's when the unwanted life changes mean when it affects you, the changes that you don't want to take place, but changes that you got to deal with. And you got to overcome them. And you can only overcome them unwanted life changes through Jesus Christ, through the power of the Holy Spirit, and through God's Word. I'm here today to give you some enlightenment on how to deal with life unwanted changes. Matter of fact, the title of this today is How to Deal with Life Unwanted Changes. And let me tell you, that word is powerful. It is strong. And when you apply it in your life, it works. That's what you got to know. God words work with application and faith and hope. It works. It works. I can say that because it has worked in my life. And I know if it worked in my life, I know it will work in your life as well. So today, let's get let's, let's, let's finish this off. And then and then it comes to school, etc. That is any particular part of your life. Unwanted life changes can come in any part of your life. It can come in your relationship with your wife, boyfriend, girlfriend, the church, the school, employment, finance, anywhere in your particular life. It can come some unwanted changes. And sometimes them unwanted changes can make you frustrated, make you angry, make you mad, make you upset, make you lose hope, make you lose confidence, make you want to give up in life. But I'm going to tell you today, you don't have to give up in life. You got Jesus. You got the Word of God. And if you take the Word of God and you believe in the Word of God and you let the Word of God work in your life, let me tell you, you can overcome unwanted life changes and be successful when the change comes. And it, instead of tearing you down, you will find it building you up in areas of your life that you need to grow in through the power of God and the knowledge of God. But you know what? For the majority of us, all we can see is negative parts of the unwanted life chain. All we can see is the bad part, you know. And when we see it, we just make it grow worse and worse and worse. But let me tell you something. If you got Jesus, you can start seeing the good even in the unwanted life change. You can see the good that can come out of this, you understand? But we got to deal with the here and now and let the future take care of itself. Then it says in order to deal with this unwanted life change, we have to renew our mind in the word of God, which is our deliverance by applying God's word in our life. See, and over, in order to deal with this unwanted life change, we have to renew our mind. 
And when you have to renew your mind, though, you got to renew your mind in the Word of God. You can't renew your mind by psychiatrists. You got to renew your mind by the Word of God. You can't renew your mind by the way of the world because the way of the world is the way you already do it. So you need to renew your mind in the Word of God so that you can think different, so that you can do different, so that you can act different, so that you can deal with things different. And the only way you do that is by renewing your mind in the Word of God. And the word of God, if you use it in your life, it becomes your deliverance. It will deliver you out of that out of that negative perspective of unwanted life change. It will deliver you out of that negative aspect of your unwanted life change and get you more in a positive aspect. You know, what I'm saying is if you apply by applying the word in your life, and if you do that then you will start being positive because guess what? You will start having hope. You will have confidence. You will be able to trust in God and see how God works. You will be able to see the goodness in God. You will be able to see your blessings instead of the, the, the pain that you grow when you're looking at it in the negative aspect. But when you're looking at it from God's perspective, God's view, then you will see the good that could even come from an unwanted life change. <laughs> and then you can see the wisdom that can even come from the unwanted life change. But I learned one thing. When you're dealing with the unwanted life change, I don't know how many of y'all have been through a program or not, but there's a prayer that they call the serenity prayer. And when you face with some unwanted life change, you need to say that prayer and believe that prayer so that you can receive that prayer and apply that prayer in your life. And it's simply said, God, Grant me the serenity or the peace to accept the things I cannot change, the courage to change the things I can, and the wisdom to know the difference. Let's go over that again. God, grant me the serenity to accept, to accept the things I cannot change, to accept the things I cannot change. That means I will be able to deal with the things I cannot change. To accept the things I cannot change. And the wisdom or the knowledge to know the difference. <laughs> and the wisdom or the knowledge to know the difference. That comes with discernment. And the wisdom of the knowledge to know the difference. And the courage to change the things that I can. And the courage to change the things that I can. And that's what you call a part of renewing your mind. But if you take that prayer and utilize it in your life, I guarantee you it will help you. I guarantee you it will help you. But now I have a few verses I want to share with you about how to deal with about how to deal with unwanted life changes. I'm just gonna go over a few verses today with you on how to deal with unwanted life changes. First, I want you to go to Jeremiah 29, 11. I'm going to read it from the, from the NIV, from the New International Version, because the way it's said is it just fills you with straight hope, knowing that everything is going to be all right as long as you trust in God. As long as you trust in God. And it says this right here, For I know the plan I have for you. God said, I know the plan I have for you, declared the Lord. Plans to prosper you. Plans to prosper you and not to harm you. Plan to prosper you and not harm you. So God ain't out to hurt you. He's out to help you. He have He's out to help you to get over the unwanted life's chain if you trust God. You know that all things going to work out to the good for them that love God according to His purpose. You know what I'm saying? Then He said to harm you and to give you hope in the future. Sometimes when you fall into them unwanted life changes, you lose hope and you can't see a future. But if you believe God's word, if you believe God's word and you receive God's word, then you know that you got hope 
and you know that you got a future. So you got a hope in the future because you trust in the Lord. Proverbs 3, 5, and 6. Because you trust in the Lord with all your heart and lean not unto your own understanding. And in all your ways you acknowledge him and you and you and you let him direct your path. Proverbs 3, 5, and 6. Let me break it down to you. Then it said, trust in the Lord. He said, rely on the Lord. He said, trust the Lord. Believe in the Lord. Receive the Lord. So he said, trust in the Lord with all your heart. He said, trust in the Lord with all that's inside of you. He said, give him everything. Trust him with everything that's inside of you. Trust in the Lord with all your heart and lean not onto your own understanding. And he said, don't trust your understanding because you know as humans we got a tendency to understand things kind of crazy. And when we understand things crazy, we got a tendency to do crazy things that leads to destruction. It don't help us most of the time. It hurts us. We think we slick. We kind on us. We think we can outthink anybody. But let me see. God said lean not onto your own understanding. He said don't lean to your understanding. He said don't trust yourself. He said don't trust yourself. He said trust me. That's what God's saying. God's saying trust me. Trust me to help you with this unwanted life change. He said, trust me. So you got to trust God. He said, trust me. Then he goes on to say, and lean not onto your own understanding. Then he said, in all your ways, acknowledge me. He said, in all that you do, acknowledge him. He said, God said, acknowledge him and he shall direct your path. And God said, if you acknowledge me in everything that you do, I will lead you. I will guide you. But I can't lead you and guide you if you don't acknowledge me. If you don't see me. So he's saying in order for this to work, you understand, you got to have a relationship with me. And if you got a relationship with me, he's saying, I will tell you where you go. I will lead you in the right way. And if I lead you in the right way, it doesn't make no difference about no life I want to change. Because when I lead you, I'm going to lead you right. I'm going to direct you right. You ain't got to worry about being confused. You ain't got to worry about being lost. Because I'm not going to let that unwanted life chain hurt you. I'm going to have it benefit you if you let me lead you. But how many of you are willing to let God lead you? How many of you are willing to acknowledge God's ways in all that you do? How many of you are willing to trust God's way or you still want to trust on your lie and let your lie lead you? <laughs> You understand? Or you want to trust on your craftiness and let your craftiness lead you? Or you want to live or, 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 or you want to live on your gods from backbiting, lying and cheating and stealing? Or is you going to let God direct you? But the only way you can get God to direct you, you got to acknowledge God. That means you got to have a relationship with God. That means you got to trust in the Lord with all your heart and lean not into your own understanding. And all your ways acknowledge Him and He will direct your paths. So when that unwanted life change comes, you better deal with it and go through it. Because that's the way you got it. Because I can do all things, understand me. Because I can do all things through Christ who strengthened me. I can do all things through Christ who give me wisdom. I can do all things through Christ who give me knowledge. I can do all things through Christ who give me deliverance. I can do all things through Christ who saved me. You understand? Who saved me. I can do all things. Not something, but all things through Christ who strengthened me. So since Christ strengthened me, I can go through this. I can go through this, through this unwanted life chain. I can go through it, you know. And then you know, and even Paul tell you, he said, you know, when you're going through these trials or your tribulations in your life, he said, rejoice. Even James said, have joy. In James one, he said, have joy when you go through your trials. Paul said in Romans five, rejoice while you go through tribulations. And when you're going through an unwanted life change, that means there's some type of trial taking place. There's something 
That's a trial taking place. And if that trial is taking place, he said rejoice to it. He didn't say get mad and angry, frustrated, upset. He didn't say none of that. He said rejoice to it. See, because when you rejoice to it, that's when you stay content and you will let God lead you. But if you don't rejoice to it, you're going to let anger rule you. You're going to let frustration rule you. You're going to let depression rule you. You're going to let hopelessness rule you. And if you're going to let all that rule you, all you're going to do is tear yourself down instead of building yourself up. But when you let Jesus and you rejoice in Jesus, the Father, the Son, and the Holy Spirit in God's Word, it can't do nothing but edify you when you go through that unwanted life changes. So that's how you deal with unwanted life changes. And then in um and then over in, and then over in Philippians it tells us for four six to seven it says don't be anxious. It says don't be anxious. Because you know when you are anxious for something, understand this. When you are anxious then you do stupid stuff. All your common sense lead. You can't see the righteousness of God. You are blinded. And frustration and anger come and make you do something that you shouldn't do. When you go through the unwanted life changes. Because sometimes when you go through this unwanted life changes, depending what it is, it can make you strike out and hit somebody and put some hurt on you. It can make you cut somebody out. It can make you steal. It can make you fornicate. It can make you gospel. It can make you lie. It can make you cheat. It can make you do all sorts of evil. When you're going through an unwanted life change, if you're not dealing with it the way that God wants you to deal with it, and that's by trusting in the Lord with all your heart, then don't be anxious. Don't be anxious for nothing. And don't be anxious. And then it's also tell us, you understand, we got to be content. When you're going through an unwanted life change, you still got to find contentment in that situation. And that contentment comes through Jesus Christ. That contentment comes through rejoicing. That contentment comes through rejoicing in the Lord. That the contentment becomes through trusting God. Because when you trust in God to take care of everything, when you trust in God to direct you and lead you, then you can rejoice and you can be content because you know one thing. You know everything is going to be all right. Then you know everything's going to be all right. No matter what kind of change you faced in life, no matter what type of unwanted changes you faced in life, you know everything's going to be all right because you got your hope in God and your future is in God's hands and not yours. Because you know what? You got to trust the invisible to take care of the invisible. And that invisible that you got to trust is God. You got to trust God. You got to trust the Holy Spirit. And you got to trust Jesus Christ. You got to trust the God here and let it work in your life. When you're facing them unwanted changes. You understand? And you, you know, and like, I, like I spoke earlier, you got to renew your mind. And you got to renew your mind in the Word of God. And when you renew your mind in the Word of God, that means you got to apply the Word of God in your life in order for it to work in your life. You understand? And that's the way that works. And then, um, but then I want to go to uh, Hebrews. No, I want to go to Matthew 6.34. And it says, don't worry about the future, basically. But, I, I, but, I, but I'll read it to you right quick. Matthew 6.34. I mean, yeah, Matthew 6, 34. Oh, that's Mark. That's why. Matthew 6, 34. I was on, I was at Mark that time. Excuse me. Yeah. Matthew 6, 34. There, take therefore no thoughts for the morrow. For the mouth should take thought for the things of itself. Sufficient unto the day 
is the evil thereof. So that evil thereof is that unwinding life change that you have to deal with today. You deal with that in the righteous way through Jesus Christ and God, and you don't have to worry about tomorrow because tomorrow will take care of itself. So whatever you face tomorrow, you will still trust in the Lord to get you through it. No matter what comes the next day, you will still trust in the Lord to get through it. And you will still trust the Lord to get through it. And then you will even go as far as, uh, uh, as far as he said, and Matthew 6, 33, I want to back up a little bit. He said, but seek ye first the kingdom of God and his righteousness, and all of these things shall be added on to you. If you go up above that, it tell you how he'll take care of your physical life. And usually when you're dealing with a with an unwanted life change, it got something to do with the physical life. It's got something to do with the physical life. So when you're going through that, you understand? He said, whatever you're going through, he said, seek ye first the kingdom of God and his righteousness. He said, seek ye first the kingdom of God, the Father, the Son, and the Holy Spirit and the word of God. Seek ye first the kingdom of God and his righteousness. And now what he's talking about when he said his righteousness, Oh, see, if you got Jesus in you and you saying you're righteous through Jesus, that means you should be living in the righteousness of God. That means you should be living by the righteousness of God's word. The word said don't steal, don't lie, don't cheat, don't steal. The word said don't de uh, 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 don't disrespect God. The word said you ought so many things. He said, don't fornicate. So if you are seeking ye first the kingdom of God and his righteousness, that means you're going to do the right things. That means you're not going to let sin have dominion on you because you got righteousness in you now through Jesus Christ. And that righteousness that you got in you through Jesus Christ, it's, it's going to take over. Because if you say you saved, that means you're saying you've been delivered. And if you've been delivered, you got to understand that. That means righteousness rule in your life. That means the word of God rule in your life. That means you don't go around and gospel, backbite, lie, cheat, steal, complain, or nothing. Because you trust in the Lord with all your heart and lean out onto your own understanding. And in all your ways you acknowledge him. And then you, then you let him die direct your past and you seek ye first the kingdom of God and his righteousness. Oh, see, that's what you mean when you're facing unwanted life change. You got to apply this in your life and let this be the head of your life, not that unwanted life change, because sometimes we let that unwanted life change determine how we think, determine how we act. Determine what we do, determine what we say. Determines a lot of different things in our life, determine how we think. You understand? Oh, but see, that unwanted life change don't need to have that power in you. You need to knock that unwanted life change down by letting the power of God work in your life. Let the power of Jesus Christ work in your life. Let the word of God work in your life. So rejoice when you're going through that unwanted life change. Say, thank you, Jesus, because I know you're with me. Thank you, Jesus, because I know you got my back. Oh, Heavenly Father, it's a blessing to be a child of yours. When you're going through that unwanted life change, acknowledge God and Acknowledge him, realize you have a relationship with him, and humble yourself to him and let him direct your path when you're going through that unwanted life change. You got to understand that. And then and then we go to Hebrews 11 1. Hebrews 11 1. Because, see, in order for all this to work in your life, you got to believe it. In order for all this to work in your life, you got to believe it. In order for you to believe this, I think you need to understand about this faith that I'm kind of talking about. Now, I'm, a, I'm going to read it the way that it's written in this King James Version. It said, now faith is the substance of things hoped for and the evidence of things not seen. Now, you got to understand, faith is the faith of things hoped for. See, your sustenance is your faith. So you got to understand that your sustenance is your faith. 
faith is the faith of faith is the faith of things hoped for and the faith of things not seen and your evidence is your faith so when you put it all together it's just saying now faith is the faith of things hoped for the faith of things not seen because it all works by faith so if faith is your substance that means you believe if faith is your substance that you believe of things hoped for you got hope in this and the evidence and the faith is the things are not seen and your faith is what make things not seen be real your faith is what make things that's not seen be real but even down here in hebrew 6 11 when we're dealing with the faith now we have to deal with hebrews 11 6 and it says but without faith, it is impossible to please him, which is God. But without faith, it is impossible to please God. For he that comes to God must believe that God, that he is. And that he is a rewarder of them that diligently seeks him. Now you got to understand, see, when you're going through life, unwanted changes, you got to understand where you stand with God. But first of all, but without faith, it's impossible to please him. Now, it's impossible to believe him. For he that comes to God must believe that must believe that he is. So the question that I'm going to ask you today, do you really have faith in God? Do you really have faith in God? Because if you really got faith in God, you can deal with them unwanted life changes because you're going to do it God's way and not your way. You're not going to lean on to your own understanding. You're going to follow God's way. See, so then if you truly trust God and that he is a rewarder of them that diligently seeks him. And that even though you're going through this unwanted life change, you know that you're going to be rewarded through God if you diligently seeks him. But you see, if you diligently persist him, persistent application, diligently, persistent application, seek him. That means you are actively involved in seeking God. And he will reward you. And rewards are blessings. Rewards are gifts. And they come from God. But in order for it to work, you can't be stuck on the unwanted life change. You got to get stuck on God. You got to get stuck on God ways. You got to renew your mind in the word of God. And you got to let God drive. And you get out. You get on the passenger side and you let God do the steering. And all you do is say, thank you, Jesus. And all you do is say, thank you, God. Because I know if it wasn't for you, I'd be lost. But I know one thing, even though I'm going through this unwanted life chain, I know that you have tugged me through it. And I know one thing, you done tugged me through it one time. I know you will take me through it this time. Because you ain't just start having unwanted life changes. They always been around. They was around before you was with God, and they're around when you're with God, but now you can handle the unwanted life change because you're letting God direct your past, because you're seeking ye first the kingdom of God and his righteousness, so you don't even see the unwanted life change when you got God first, and when you got Jesus first, all you do is flow through it. <laughs> it might hold you down for a minute, but you get back up and say, oh sinful nature, oh way of the world, I'd knock you down because I'm trusting God, I'm trusting Jesus. I'm trusting the Holy Spirit. I'm trusting the Word of God. I don't care nothing about this unwanted life change because I know God got my back. And I know that God is going to get me through it. And I know God is going to take me through it. And I know I'm going to come out smelling like a beautiful rose. Because I got the Almighty on my side. So whatever life brings me, Whatever life brings me, I know I can get over it because I got Jesus. I know I can go through it because I got Jesus. He is my deliverance. He is my strength. He is my survivor. He is my crush. You can talk about people, oh, you got a crush. Yes, I got a crush. And that crush is Jesus. And when I lean on that crush, Jesus, he keeps me standing. He keeps me walking. He keeps me going through these unwanted life changes with a smile in my face and with joy in my heart. What about you? Can you say the same thing? I got joy in Jesus. Unwanted life changes don't have me down. They can't have me down because Jesus got me through it. Jesus take me through it. 
God take me through it. The Holy Spirit take me through it. Obedience to God's word takes me through it. So seek ye God diligently and he will reward you if you believe in God. If you believe in God. If you believe in God. And you got to really believe. So I'm saying today. So I'm saying today. I just told you how to deal with life. Unwanted changes. On the Christian perspective view. And I'm telling you now, if you apply it in your life, you will be blessed. Because God is a blessing. God blesses his children. God take care of his children. And you are a child of God. And you are a child of God. But I'm going to tell you something. A lot of people don't like to hear. But you got to be obedient to God. And the only way you can be obedient to God, you got to be obedient to God's words. And that means you got to humble yourself. That means you got to deny yourself. Pick up your cross and follow Jesus. Jesus was our example of how we should be with God. He showed us. Jesus is our eternal life. Jesus is our salvation. He is our deliverance. If you don't understand that, you're not delivered. Or you need to work on your deliverance. But I'm going to tell you now, it only comes by faith. You can't rationalize it into you. You just got to jump out there and trust it. You got to trust what you can't see in order for it to work in your life. And then what he tell you to do, you don't see it working in your life. But once you apply it in your life, you'll see the invisible taking care of the invisible and you will see it become visible. And that means your life change for the better. And unwanted life changes will not have no effect on your life. I hope this was a blessing. I hope this was a blessing to you. I hope to bring another message to you next week. But I want you to know, I'm on YouTube under Thomas Patterson. Feel free to go to Feel free to go there and check them out. Feel free to go there and check it out. Matter of fact, go there and subscribe. And just look at some of the other videos that I got there. Because I know everything that God has sent me from the time I began it until now. It's been done by the Holy Spirit. So let the Spirit of God talk to you. And I want you to know another thing. I love you and God love you. And continue to live for God and keep your hope in your trust in Jesus Christ.